but we've talked about the business part of it. How about on the field in the AFC North? You've got Deshaun Watson eventually. You've got Lamar Jackson. You got Joe Burrow and Mitch Trubisky slash Kenny Pickett. We'll talk about that later. Kenny right. Pickett. Right. So I, those first three, that the, the last two are really not in this conversation. They're, they're they'll be good quarterbacks, but they're not at least those first three. Those are all elite quarterbacks. If you had to pick one of them, you got to call one of them the best. Who's the best one? Oh, that is so hard um, because they're u- unique in their own ways. I mean, we know that Lamar, uh, as a runner, is unparalleled at the position. The thing that people don't talk about enough is that he's underrated as a passer, too. Go back and look at his passing numbers in terms of the production that he has had there, yeah. in terms of touchdown passes and whatnot. And he is a legitimate dual threat. Deshaun Watson has shown that he is a legitimate dual threat. Um, does he have the flair as a runner that Lamar has? No, but we know mobility wise, he's a guy you got to account for in that way. Joey B, that's not his game. But in terms of from the pocket, he's tremendous. So if I were to pick one, to be honest with you, I would ask myself, am I looking short term or long term? Because if I'm looking long term, I'm going to say, give me the pocket passer because his career should be longer. Why? Because he's probably not going to take as many hits as the mole quarterback who's getting out at times. Um, And the one thing about Lamar, he has taken a lot of hits. Not not the devastating kind, but enough that it concerns you. Um, So if I had to pick one and we're talking long term, I'm probably going Joey B. If we're talking in the five to six, seven year range, I think I go Lamar. Yeah, I I, I think I'm gonna go. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Burrow, and he's never he's never been an MVP. I'm gonna go Burrow because yeah, he's of only, what he's, he's done. He's only been in the league a minute. No, I'm saying, but he, he like, will be. I'm saying MVP only in the context of oh, here's the standard for you to be considered great. You got to win MVP. I'm not saying that. I'm saying compared to a guy, I'm picking him over a guy who has been an MVP right. in Lamar Jackson. That's all I'm saying. But I right. think he has what he did last year and what he started to do before he got hurt his rookie year. It's incredible. Not only that, it's not only what he did on the field, you know, just a, a leader, a natural leader for the Bengals. But what he did for that franchise before they even drafted him. Remember him. You probably were there. They're talking to him in Indianapolis and the Bengals had a number one pick. And at the time, how soon we forget, nobody wanted to go there. You're thinking, oh, wow. You want to go to the Bengals? He was like, I'd love to. I love the opportunity. I grew up in Ohio. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd like the opportunity to, to lead that franchise. And just he just always... He finds a way to turn uh, ne- uh, potentially negative situations into positive uh, statements. Uh, he just frames things in a certain kind of way, and he can ball. And that well, one team of the things- follows him. That team follows him. A guy going to his third year, a leader already. No, absolutely. I think that's one of the intangibles about the quarterback position that you have to have to me to truly be special is that if you're going to lead, People have to want to follow you. And these quarterbacks that we're talking about have that. Joey B, I, w- I remember I was at the combine when he gave that, when he had that press conference and he was asked at least a dozen times about Cincinnati. Would he say he would not play there? And, and he, he said, no, you know, I will play if they draft me. But the other thing, let me say this about leadership and guys rallying behind the guy. I will never forget this. Year two of Lamar Jackson, they opened the preseason at the Hall of Fame game. I'm talking to one of the team employees who has been there with the organization since back when the organization was in Cleveland. And this person said Mm. to me, he has never seen players rally around a guy like they have to Lamar Jackson. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You had Ray Lewis, you had Ed Reed, Jonathan Ogden, all of these guys. And you're telling me, that guys have rallied around Lamar Jackson unlike they did to those players. And this person who I respect and who I don't believe would blow smoke up my my bottom said yes, that he has that kind of 
it about him. And so again, what I think it goes back to is you and I have talked about is that authenticity factor. Lamar Jackson is going to be who he is. What you think be damned. And he is going to do it his way. And that image of him and his mom sitting in that green room at the draft as we're getting near the bottom of the first round and everybody is gone, but it's just the two of them together sitting there waiting on his name to be called. That image is, is seared in my memory in terms of when people talk about why they do things the way they do, it's because they are that tight, that close. And there's that love and that bond between the two of them that above all else, it's the two of them against the world. And they're going to do what they think is best for them and for Lamar. And he went to the right franchise, didn't he, Jim? I mean, just being Absolutely. drafted. Being drafted by the Ravens. And for some strange reason, I know he was hurt last year. I'm still not worried about him getting hurt running the football. It's, Here's, it's just let, so let me say this it. to you about well, let me say yeah. this to you about that. I had a story I was working on last year about Lamar before he got hurt. And so it never ran because obviously he got hurt and didn't play again. And I was talking to defensive players about what is it like to actually play this guy and see him in the open field. And I'll never forget one of the things Tyron Matthews said to me was that he's a lot bigger than you think. Mm. And people look at him because he's not, you know, prior to this year, so he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't bulked up up top, but he said, you look at him from the waist down, he's got some mass on him. And he said, he is a strong physical dude. So if you think that you're just going mm. to lay him out or square him up, you got another thing coming besides. So besides that speed and elusiveness, he can be physical when he has to. But the thing I've seen with Lamar is he knows when to use one or the other, you know, and he doesn't take a lot. Every quarterback is going to get hit, but he doesn't take a lot of those devastating hits that you see some mobile quarterbacks take. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.